Hi, good afternoon everybody. It's 12, so I have to say good afternoon. And uh, I'm Kiran Hampapura. I am a delivery head in Wipro, managing a portfolio of accounts. And uh, along with me, we've got Rashmi. And uh, while before she introduced herself, I think there are two the good things which have happened. One, uh, Shiva has said that only five questions, life should become easier. And the other thing is a big thanks to First Source for covering the basics or what is gig. And you had tons of questions. So that's also good for us. You know the basics now. We'll go to the advanced stage. So, uh, Rashmi, over to you. Thank you, Kiran. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rashmi Salgar, and I'm a gig delivery consultant at Wipro. Uh, as Kiran rightly said, the basics of gig is known with the earlier presentation and good presentation so far, good insights of what each one of us have been contributing and using the tools and technologies of the industry. Pandemic has actually redefined the way we work. And it has the digitization, which has led to the pandemic wave, with the support of technology, tools have actually given rise to the hybrid model of working. And this, in turn, has increased the remote workers. Now, this remote work, generally all of us know, is no travel. This gives the ample lot of time to the associates, and hence there's an increase in the very gig force. So the gig workforce, or the gig economy as we call it, is on the increase. And Nashcom has estimated this Indian gig workforce to be at 23.5 million by the year 2030. Two thirds of the organization are now employing gig workers, and the top demand drivers being in the areas of specialized skills of software development, data analytics, and cost optimization. GIG is creating an impact with increased efficiency of completion of tasks, reduced time to hire, and also an ability to actually attract an experienced and a diverse pool of talent. The tech industry today is actually facing with new challenges every day. And the IT companies, at the same time, are actually trying to catch up with the customer demand to fulfill it, to get the work started. In such a scenario, Wipro has been a thought leader in the gig IT industry. Wipro has created a gig workforce, which is our innovative and disruptive model to build talent. And the gig workforce that we've created is a very important talent strategy, which is over and above the traditional models of managing workforce. So the gig workforce is divided into two. The external gig, which has about 1.7 million members spanning across 190 plus countries, called as Top Coder, which has been with Wipro since 2017. Our internal gig are our own Wipro associates who are on the platform globally called as Top Gear. So let me walk you through some of the gig delivery models that we have operationalized in Wipro. We have the outcome-based delivery, end-to-end, -end, the hackathons, idachons, or the challenge models as we call it, and the staff augmentation. Every business need which comes in from a customer, we get started with actually identifying the scope, understanding the need of what is the percentage of work that can be done by the gig workers. Further to which, there is a community and an engagement identification which happens. While it may seem very easy when I say community identification, there's a lot of groundwork which goes as to how these communities are available within a short span of time. Because the very concept of enabling gig workforce is to get the work started, right? And these work, these kind of enhancements of work packets which come in from the customer generally need to be delivered at a very short span of time. And they're completely owned by the IT service provider. So the groundwork that happens to make this available to the customer or to the project teams is a identification of a community more proactively. Because 
there is already a set data that is available to know what kind of skills, what is the trend, what is the forecast of the skill, what is the criticality of that that the customer is looking at to get it deployed as soon as possible. Those are some of the things which is already available with us. So we also tend to be building proactive community skill-wise internally. With that, it goes to matching up with the needs and the role that the customer is expecting to be met with a set timeline. And these workforce, which comes in the form of a gig worker, is added to the existing pool to handle the spike of work that requires to be delivered, which is the outcome-based model. There are many of the projects where the customers look at an end-to-end -end delivery and there would be a need of a hybrid model kind of a working where you need a seasoned program manager along with a combination of full-time people who are there already in the existing projects with the additional gig workers who need to be formed as a team to complete the work deliverables that the customer is looking at. And this forms the end-to-end project delivery model. Should you have a problem which the customer comes in where he requires a solution, we run competitions in the form of hackathons or ideathons where we have individuals and the teams competing and the best solution is derived out of it. We have a lot of customer demands which are just in time fulfillment, specifically where customers are very particular about putting full-time gig workers. In such a scenario, we leverage on a model called a STAS, which is called a talent edge service, where the full-time gig workers are also deployed at customer locations at a flexi staffing durations. And this collaborated model, in each of these stages, the work is broken down, which we call it as atomization, and these work packets which come in are delivered at a pace that is required as a milestone or a timeline that the customer requires maybe on a weekly basis or a fortnight as how the customer states it and is executed as a full-fledged model. With this, I would now hand it over to Kiran who would further continue with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. I think uh, when we introduced, um, maybe we didn't tell you really, very clearly, Rashmi is a service provider within our company itself who provides this offering of gig workforce. And I am a consumer for what offerings they have and we take it to our customers. And this has been there for many years and uh, Wipro has been a pioneer as far as you know gig workforce is concerned. While we have an internal gig, we also have an external gig when we had acquired a company called Topcode about you know, more than five years back. This has surely disrupted the ways of working giving us an additional talent pool. And all of us within the workforce management do understand the, you know, the key pain point for us is where, how can I bridge the gap between demand and supply? You know, it's always this way. We are catching up, but still not there. And I think somebody made a comment yesterday, Raj was saying that if it matches, maybe we don't have a job, right? In workforce management. So uh, jokes apart, but uh, this has been a big differentiator for us in terms for customers as well. And we are able to provide not only gig workforce, but even the variations within that. We go to customers, you know, say, okay, we've got internal gig, we've got external gig as well. So both options are available to you. The benefits are there for you. Which one do you want to prefer? And moreover, there are a lot of customers who say that, you know, hey, I'm not interested in which one you select. This is my end goal. This is what you have to deliver. You use whatever is, you know, suitable to you. So there are various different scenarios. The other thing is the scalability part of it. We started small, we evolved, different scenarios, you know, uh, use cases keep coming to us and that the product or the offering is getting you know, optimized based on the inputs which has come over the past few years. So with that background, what I will do is, I will give you an example of or take a case study which I implemented from for one of my customers. This is a you know, uh, customer in Europe and how we delivered, what is the problem statement and it will give you a fair idea of whatever Rashmi talked about you know, in terms of what the model is, model is how did that get delivered? Okay. So uh, this was for a retail customer, a uh, relatively big uh, customer in Europe from a, uh, they've got a lot of supermarkets, about 10,000, uh, uh, you know, stores in about 20 plus countries. So the requirement that they had is 
please help us set up a test factory and in addition they also had a lot of uh, development related work which was sort of built along with that and the key i would call it challenge when it came to us was i need a team of 100 plus to be ramped up in a period of 4 to 5 months and yes when it came of course you know we thought how do we do it uh, not because of the number but because of the spread of skills there were some skills especially sap related where even for us to get people from the market was a challenge. There were very few and even within our company, we had a few. Now, how can we tap them? Because they're working full time on some other project. But through this model, we were able to tap whatever few people we had and keep our lights going on. So in terms of you know, the key problem statement uh, that we had is, how do we get people with varied skills ramped up in a short period of time? The other thing was that uh, when you get people, even you get people from the market, there is a time for them to get used to the ways of working. Every organization has a structure, a process, how do you get them involved so that they are up and running, if not day one, but maybe day 10 or so on. But the advantage is uh, this one used the internal gig, which basically meant these were all empl full-time employees of our organization. And when we reached out to those people, we have a mechanism in place, wherever we have any requirement, we break it down into chunks, we call it a challenge, goes to the entire community who are registered on the top gear model. They say, I am interested. So key differentiator is the quality. I think this, questions, uh, this question had come up in the earlier session. Only motivated folks will apply. I will go beyond my eight to nine hours of work, which I'm doing. I will work, I will learn, I will earn, right? So the, this was a massive advantage which helped us as an additional channel for talent, for fulfillment. Of course, we have traditional challenges, we adopted all of those, but this was an additional challenge which helped us to meet the you know, end target. The uh, key, I would say, you know, uh, benefits that we got of it was helping us ramp up in a short period of time. The other thing was cost also, which is very, very important. If we had relied a lot on getting people from the market through hiring, contracting, it does get a hit on the you know, cost as well. But these were all our folks and the cost savings vis-a-vis -vis, if we had gone for people outside is I would say less than half. And of course, more importantly, uh, we got plugged into with this customer. They had a three or a four year you know, roadmap with timeline set in. For my test factory, I want whatever release 2.5 to be completed, so many test cases by that particular date, and so on. It has all has been planned. And we started the engagement in the middle. There was another you know, uh, vendor. We replaced them, took the transition. So time was fixed. So that was always a challenge. I think all of us you know, work with that challenge. But with this, we were able to meet that particular number of deliverables which are expected from us because we were able to use the additional pool. And of course, uh, in terms of the skill spread, uh, SAP was primary, but of course there were a few others on you know, Microsoft stack as well. But SAP was a big, big challenge. And this was a massive and you know, a game changer for us because all throughout when we started work, most of us were not even confident. Will we able to meet the aggressive timelines of the customer? Where do we get all those people? Because it, it had got about you know, 15 skills or so, and most of them were on SAP. And some of them people who hadn't, you know, uh, experienced that or uh, uh, getting people was too, too far away. But luckily we were able to tap people within our organization through this, you know, wonderful platform that we have. So with that, what I would also, this was basically a use case of how we did. And, you know, it was in one of my accounts with one of my customers. Uh, we would just like to move ahead and let you know about what are the benefits. And when we talk about benefits, everybody has to gain through this model. The customer, uh, the employee who agrees to become a part of the gig workforce, and also the company as a whole. What are the benefits that we get? From a customer perspective, it was access to talent. And uh, there are a lot of scenarios where you don't get the people, number of people that you want by a given time period. That's always a challenge. Everybody says, I need the best people by this date by this time, you know, that's always the requirement. Everybody wants just in time, but we have our challenges and people in the workforce management do understand that. But this gives you an additional in you know, a supply pool and which 
I would surely call it as innovative, disruptive, and non-traditional. The other thing is, uh, it does help in your productivity because though these people would not, most of them will not be available full time because they are working somewhere else. But whatever part time they are able to give you, maybe it could be three people equivalent of one FT, two people equivalent of one FT. But these are all motivated people. So the productivity generally that you get are all experienced people who will say, oh, I'm interested, I would want to do. When, when you get work done by enthusiastic people, productivity has, you know, it's a directly proportional to the productivity. That's a big, big gain that we were able to see through this model. The other, time, other thing is getting uh, a talent very quickly on, uh, onboarded onto your projects. Because one is the person is already within your company. I'm talking about the internal pool. I'll come to the external pool as well. So internal pool, the person is already within the company, knows the way of working, knows people, knows your structure. So at least one week, two weeks of KT is not at all required. You save that because the person is already aware of that. What you need to know is, again, uh, what is happening through this platform, we even, they would know that who are the best people. And we can, you know, vet that and from a skill set perspective, the experience perspective, before we get them onboarded. So time to get them onboarded and make them productive is very, very short. And of course, if you compare it to external hiring, I mean, you saved a lot, right? Instead of waiting for three to four months here, it's a matter of a week or two. The other thing is, uh, you know, there are a lot of scenarios that it's not that always it has to be a, say, a application development, testing, you know, documentation kind of work. It can even be for idea generation. A customer says, you know, I am here point A, I want to go to point B, tell me what are the options. So we can run this, what we call it as a challenge, put it onto the platform and say, okay, this is what the requirement is. Of course, you have to define it quite well and people can generate ideas for you. A lot of times, it's not a full-blown project, but somebody wants an idea, but to get that idea itself and finding the right people takes a lot of time. And look at the massive scale, that number of people that you are able to reach out to. So that's always, you know, a big, big gain for us. The other thing is a lot of customers today are asking for innovative you know, uh, delivery models. Can you come out with a model which is core and flex? What I mean by that is customers say, you know, hey, my spikes in demands is like a sinusoidal curve. It's not like flat you know, where you can predict. Even I don't know, it's very unpredictable. So what we do is we ask, okay, what will be the minimum number of people that you need? We'll say that is fixed, that's your core, that will not change. And all your spikes will be you know, resolved through the gig workforce that we have. You only need take them for the time that you want. So net, net, see the benefit. Because I think just in the last session, somebody was talking about, you cannot get somebody for just you know, four week work. You, know, you hire somebody and then say, oh, you know, again, cross train, you don't have. I mean, it's a big headache for all of us. But this model solves the big problem through this core and flex model. So the spikes in demands can be easily met by these. And from an employee perspective, um, there are various reasons, and all of us would know that. You know, why does why do some people uh, want to leave a company? Of course, we talked about you know monetary compensation and so on. But a lot of times, it's about is the company giving them the right opportunities for them to learn and grow. And people at different stage of life have got you know different needs, but for most of the people who are part of the developer community. They feel that I am working on skill A, slowly become redundant. I need to learn something on a new technology, AI, ML, data science, and so on, but I'm not getting an opportunity. But here, you can participate in that gig, learn, earn, and of course, no doubt, you, you improve your resume and your brand value as well. In addition to that, for the additional time that the employees are giving, they're able to earn money, and that's a big, big advantage for them. It, that itself is surely a motivation. So, so you're cracking two things there, you know, where we see, we, we were discussing about the reasons for attrition. So taking care of the compensation part, taking care of their learning, they're moving up the curve, and through the work, they're getting hands-on experience, and the brand value is getting built. So big, big advantage for the employees as well. Now look at it from a company perspective. Um, company will measure, you know, their vendors. And let's say Vipro is just an example that I need to see, I have, we have agreed upon a particular deliverable from you. This is what we are expecting. Are you able to meet that by the given time frame? Don't come and tell me I don't have, you know, a talent. So 
through this model, as I told you, we were able to address the spikes. So we have got a customer who is happy that we were able to meet the timelines or deliverables that we have agreed upon. The other thing is that in fact leads to better you know, credibility with the customer for us to grow business with them. And the other thing is the lead time to start being so short when compared to months, it can be a few days sometimes, but at least a week on an average. And that is a big, big benefit to customers. And if you look at it uh, from a revenue perspective, there are a lot of scenarios that if we are not able to put the right talent at the right time, it's an opportunity loss. The customer says, oh, get your people, I'll start billing right from the day you give. And you can start from next Monday. But yeah, but are we ready to fulfill all their you know, needs, uh, talent needs from next Monday? May not be. And the whatever delay is there, that's an opportunity cost to us, it's an opportunity lost to earn revenue. Through this, if you are to able to shrink the lead times, that's a revenue generating opportunity, so you don't lose that. So that's a big, big advantage for the company. And the other thing that I talked about is, since these are your own people, they are within the boundary of the organization, they are working extra hours and earning money, so that itself is a big, big cost advantage and margin improvement for all of us. So this, what I told you is about the internal gig, if you look at the external uh, gig workforce that we have, where we acquired a company called Topcoder, one of the largest crowdsourcing companies in the world, uh, it came into existence around 2010. It evolved over a period of time. They started initially around, uh, you know, more on the digital stack, then they moved into AI ML. And just to let you know that NASA is one of the biggest customers who use Topcoder. And even the Harvard Medical Institute is Top Coder's biggest institute. And I think there was one case study which I'd like to tell you, which happened about two years back. Uh, they've got the MRI uh, CT scans of the brain. And uh, what they're, you know, for even for radiologists and doctors, when they have to see CT scans, they charge per hour. And it's quite big. So all CT scans are taken, and they, they call it the slices of the brain. And they send to the people who, would, doctors who would verify it which one they look at the photograph and the image and say, this one has got a tumor. Now that one, using the data scientists in the top coder community, they were able to detect tumors based on the image. It was an algorithm which was created. And it was the same, it had the same accuracy level of a doctor. But look at the cost savings, it was massive. So uh, that has been great. The other example I would like to give you is, uh, you know, for a customer who was more in the uh, transportation business, it's uh, uh, in the APAC region itself, they wanted to understand traffic in their city and they wanted to plan all modes of transport, be it the metro, the train, the bus and for that they required traffic density. And what we were able to get access is satellite images throughout the day and it was studied over a period of time. And we were able to analyze and suggest, it was a um, government project, analyze that where should you put your stations for road, which is your you know, bus, your train and metro. So massive benefits coming out is in you know, a top coder model. So I think this is a, uh, gives you a good view into how we are able to leverage uh, the gig workforce. And uh, what I would say is we, we, have, we have reached a stage where we are able to scale now. Uh, we evolved over a period of time. It was surely disruptive when we came in. It was uh, uh, something which was quite new to people. It was addressing our main problem statement or the challenges. And now we are on the path of scaling it. Leveraging both internal gig as well as the external gig workforce. So yeah. <clears throat> that's all I had. So open for any questions. And I just said at the beginning, I was very happy that you know first source answered a lot of questions about gig workforce, so thanks to you guys. <laughs> when it comes to uh, automizing your task, that has been a challenge that we faced when I was in my previous organization. How did you tackle that? That is my first question. And second, how did you motivate, because this is for your internal gig, of course, how did you motivate your internal employees to, I know there should be a reward and recognition uh, pertaining to the number of hours because this is over and above that you're doing. But did you have a, a framework, reward framework in place? Yeah, a very good question. 
Um, I think there are different delivery models is what Rashmi was talking about. Uh, there are models wherein which is more of an outcome based model, it all depends on you know which project, which customer and so on. There are some staff hog models and for each of them the uh, requirement for atomization will be different. For staff hog atomization is not required. We just say this person is available to you say 4 hours in a day, 20 hours in a week you use you know however you want. If it is more around we take ownership of the project end to end or we are given a part of that particular project. So the question was about atomization and for those who may not know about what atomization is, atomization is a process where we break that piece of work into smaller manageable chunks for people to deliver in the shortest period of time. And there we have got a set of I would call it architects or gig consultants and I know Rashmi is also a gig consultant who know that for this piece of work how many uh, challenges is a piece of work that I have to create. And then what they look at is how many pieces I have to create, will it be different? One could be design, one could be development and one could be testing. And they are mature enough because we have been doing this for a few years now that once I get the output from each of them, one leads to the other or by stitching the output of all of them I will be able to give the final product. And in the atomization, the important part is that the definition has to be very clear. You have to say this is what it is all about, of course we do not give customer details, everything is masked and this is the input criteria, this is the output criteria, this is what I expect once you finish the work. So all that is done including the prize money with start date, end date and also a review date in between because those who apply for it and work we have to review them in between. So all these are defined in that particular you know, atomization process. The uh, sorry, what was the second part of your question? So rewarding. Rever okay, reward. How do you motivate them? Sorry. See, as far as internal employees is concerned, and even the external gig as well, only people because we don't go and force somebody say you come into the platform or you do this work for me. We create what our requirement is. There is a portal available. We flash it there. People will look into it. Whoever is interested can take it up. It's not only interest. Sometimes it's also timing. They are very busy, very stretched in the current project, they do not have time for this so they may not even apply. But those who apply will be people who are motivated to do that work and earn money. Right? So only motivated folks will come. And for every work packet which we give and put it into the platform where people will accept that, the uh, prize money is defined. It is based on, it could be uh, niche skills, it could be based on complexity, it could be based on duration and lot of other factors. So all that is defined. So when they click they themselves know that if I do this I will get this money. And uh, there is also a mechanism where there are some uh, I would say kind of projects where we have multiple prizes. I will tell you a very good example. Uh, in terms of the design, let us say de design is one example where this is where I am, this is where I to reach but how do I go there can be different paths. So this can be an ideation, say so, okay tell me the options that I can do, so that is one way. And design is uh, especially the UI UX is another one, if we give generally what happens, customer says okay you know do UI UX for this is my requirement and when we as a project team has got fixed set of 10 people on that project then overall they will uh, generate ideas you know design something and we will give one option or maybe two or are these both okay. But if you give it out or design UI UX to the gig, everybody has got their own idea. Somebody will use a different color combination, somebody will have the graphics on the left, text on the right, somebody will put the other way and think about the options that we can generate. And I think just a short while back I was talking about an example for the one of the um, transportation authority of a government. The customer was zapped. Within a period of about uh, 5 days we were able to generate about 9 different UI, UX you know designs and you know graphics to the customer. I mean they said if we had given to anybody one option would have come in that 7-8 days. Here opened it up and everybody has got their own ideas and thoughts everything you know came out. So from a monetary uh, perspective everything is very well defined based on the criteria that you work on and the payment is done based on that and the good thing for our internal gig is everything is very structured. Um, all defined within the company internally if you finish that work the reviewer has to just say I am satisfied with that job in the portal. Done. It says straight away goes to salary processing, it gets paid in your next month's salary. Very, very clear cut process. And as far as the external gig is concerned, 
that also is the same process wherein of course since they are international so they use a lot of you know other portals which are finance related portals and some of them you may already know which is more of a money transfer portal through which you know once the reviewer says work is done they get paid oh, i hope i answered your question uh, hello yeah uh, this side sorry yeah. so i saw i saw multiple hands going on over this side okay please go ahead yeah this ragu here um, firstly you know wonderful uh, presentation and great model uh, i just wanted to understand going back to your use case with around 100 ft ram over a period of 5 months so what is the percentage between the external and the internal gig uh, okay workforce? now as far as this uh, gig workforce i think it was there in that slide uh, from an effort perspective for that particular project about 12% of the work for that work packet came through the gig workforce okay. just the gig workforce okay. and the other was our traditional you know channels of fulfillment okay and the external side i don't go much because it's a regular hiring process sourcing and everything right correct but if it is an internal and say for example 1000 people will opt for this opportunity right and how soon you are going to source them and put them on board to the project so is that the same time that takes between external and internal or internal will have a limited or much lower timeline than as considered to the external yeah, yeah. let me take that yeah. Uh, yeah so for the what is our sla to kind of get that community identified and put them we have an sla of 3 days okay so within 3 days the entire process will yes, be yes. and is that bad you know because there will be various level of assessments and approvals right so is that tag with your employee ratings over a period of 2 years or 3 years and based on that weightage you're going to assess that or you will have the skill assessment knowledge based test something like that okay as i i think i did mention that while uh, we have a forecast that is already available we know what are the demand trends that are coming from the customers we have proactive communities which are built so theoretically it is available with us okay. but will those communities be available to put in that extra effort is where kiran was explaining that we post that particular uh, description of what is needs to be exhibited in the role and the skill that is required where the community members who are highly motivated who want to pick up this challenge come and rate themselves once they rate themselves we pick up this and give it to the project teams to do a self evaluation to check if they meet the criteria what the customer is customer is expecting then on goes we go to the next step And, and just to add to that uh, what happens is just like when you ask for talent you get it from various sources internal could be external what we do we generally have a discussion on interview whether you know the skills so here also the same thing happens when a person comes or is ready to, has applied for that particular gig then we have a discussion with the person assess the skills and we onboard them onto the projects okay and last question being a layman right so um i can assume that the success factor between internal and external internal will be much more higher right uh, is that the same happening in this model so if i were to assume what is the success factor between internal and external see i think the usage depends a lot on customers as well some will say that i'm open for the gig workforce but i would want them to be within the boundaries of wipro which generally happens with a lot of you know banking insurance financial customers others say i don't care give me any option as long as you know some basic things are security data privacy ndas are signed with each of them uh, taken care of and the external that gig that we have we have another advantage with that since it is a company we acquired you know based in the us we are able to tap into a lot of us government kind of projects which we from here couldn't have so a combination of these two is giving us massive scale and each of them has got its own advantages you know but the good thing is both have got integrated into you know our company and we leverage based on which suits for which type of requirement okay thanks yeah, thank you hey um uh, two part question actually uh so you said uh uh you guys are at a point of inflection where you're looking to kind of accelerate your growth uh what is kind of driving that and is it is this more uh focused towards uh doing a um, uh internal gig work uh, more so in a sense that where you have your employees there kind of your uh base employees and then building on top of that or are you uh kind of accelerating growth just from a external gig workers okay so it's a combination of both in terms of growth because even if you look at the people within the organization every organization has got a churn 
people go, new people come in. So new people get adopted, uh, come into the platform. So what we keep on doing is when we started, uh, the way we have evolved is we started focusing on maybe those technology areas or skill sets where our capabilities were higher and stronger, create a gig around that. And now we are spreading wider. And now one growth is about how do we create communities from different skill sets where we have capabilities, how do we bring them in? The second one is from a scale or a number perspective. The third one is, I mean, a scale or number is how many people are part of the platform. The third one is people are there on the platform, but how can we make more people available at a given point of time? Or let me call it as active, you know, gig workforce, right? So on these three parameters is how we are trying to scale. In terms of external, the same principle applies there as well. They keep on, uh, even that has evolved that way. It all started initially around the digital, you know, Java full stack. Then uh, AI ML has come in, data science has come in. And I think that has been a big, big one for us there. On the external uh, gig workforce, the use of or working on say uh, uh, OEM products is lower. It's more on open source technologies that becomes easier to scale. So I think there are various, uh, I would say factors or which we take into consideration for a group. And these are the primary ones. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. So Kiran, uh, my question is like, uh, when we look at internal gig, it's a good concept, but it's more or less like a overtime, right? So if we have a professionals who are already stretching on a project, they are not able to sign up because they are already stretching, they are working for long hours and they are not able to sign up. But when it comes to internal gigs, someone who is already, someone who's able to work for eight to nine hours, they are able to sign up. And they are also getting some of the rewards. Are you seeing any attrition trend for the non sign up people? That is one. And two, how are you going to balance between both the groups, which is the people who are signing up or the people who are already stretching on the projects? How are you making that balance? See, I think one thing, the key thing that we have to, you know, start, you know, we have to understand is, we are not going and asking people that come, you have to work. We are not saying it's you have to come and work on in this particular model. We give our requirements, whoever is available at that period of time is able to commit their time with those timelines are also written. This is what you have to do starting this date, ending this date. You know, and so are you ready to take up that challenge? Then, you know, about 15, 20 people will say yes on a particular day. And the, their availability is also, va it varies across, you know, period of time. I am not available for the next, you know, uh, two, four weeks. So I am swamped, no time to breathe. But if the project starts after four weeks, I am ready. So there are different people who become available at different points of time. Yeah, I know Shiva Thank is, you. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much, uh, Vipro's. Uh, Presentation on gig, amazing one. Thank you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank Lovely you. questions. Thank you.